Hi guys, today's video is about a cute little camera I came across. This is called a Ditto 99. They were also named Fineta 99s, F-I-N-E-T-T-A, depending on which version you bought. They were all the same, just the name changed depending on which country it was sold in, I guess. This one I got for $43. Its value on eBay is about $130. It's in fair condition and it's fully functional. These were made in West Germany. They're essentially point-and-shoot cameras, um, or at least that's, that's what Panetta made for many years. And then in 1954, they introduced this Panetta 99. This one uh, has interchangeable lenses. And it also has an auto-advanced wind-up mechanism, so you can take 12 photos uh, without having to advance the film manually. They came in two colors, black and ivory. This is called ivory, although it's pretty much a dark gray, but that may be the patina it's gained over the years. It's actually very clean. It just looks dark gray, but they call it ivory. It's a cute little camera and can really be thought of as the first 35 millimeter motor drive camera. These were made from 1954 to 57. These two little levers on the front are what release the lens. You just push them together and this pops right out. And you have to push them together to get it back in again. And then it locks in. It's not a rangefinder camera. It has a viewing screen. So in order to focus, you have to use the indicators on the top to find the distance or guess at it as best you can. This would be infinity and this would be about I believe three meters. I think it's marked in meters. The markings are very faint. You have to have really good eyes and a magnifying glass to figure out the settings there. The same is true of setting the f-stops. That's this little black ring on the top. You turn it clockwise and counterclockwise to set the f-stops. And again, there's an indicator over on the left, and it goes from 2.8 to 16. That's a little easier to see, but the uh, distance scale is pretty tough. This is the winding knob. There's a spring inside. You wind it up. There's an arrow showing the direction to wind. And they warn you to be very careful and not overwind it because you can break the spring. And of course, this is the shutter release button. And that took a picture. This is the shutter speed dial. And like all cameras, you probably shouldn't change the shutter speed unless you already have it cocked. But in this case, with the auto winder, it's sort of always cocked. So it's set at a 200th of a second now. You simply lift and turn the shutter speed dial to set it. When you set it back down, it'll click into place. That's the um, exposure counter window there. This little thing that's tipped up is the flash sink port. Here's where you would mount your flash on a cold shoe. Here's the serial number and the label ditto. This is the film rewind knob. So again, you can take pictures without having to wind the film. And you can see it's getting a little slower each time. So again, you can just wind it up. To get some tension in the spring to take more pictures. The viewfinder window is pretty small. This little lever on the side is for setting the flash sync speed. It's pretty cryptic. Um, I can't imagine actually using flash. This lever on the little lever on the front. The B setting is for bulb mode. You can push that. It pushes real hard, but you push that over to the B setting. Then if you push the shutter release button, it will actually stay locked wide open even after you release the shutter release button until you push the B button 
back to the right, then that will close the shutter again. It's a little strange because on the speed dial, you can also select B even though this lever may not be in the B position. If you select speed B from the speed dial where you rotate for your shutter speed, then when you press the shutter button, it will open the shutter and when you release the shutter button, it will close the shutter as you would normally expect with a B setting. So that's like bulb and lock, where the B on the lever is like the locked bulb position and the B with the shutter speed dial is like a normal bulb position. That's to rewind the uh, film, which is there's no film in it right now. On the bottom, this little window here, which ironically is um, left-hand thread, so to release the back, you have to turn it clockwise instead of what you would believe would be normal, counterclockwise, to unscrew the bottom, or I should say the back. When you take it off, it looks like that. Okay, when you're loading film, you put the film in here, you have to get this up out of the way, insert your cartridge, strut it across here, you have to loosen this knob until you turn it to where these little sprockets line up so you can hook the film onto there. Hook it on good, and then you tighten this back up. That engages this transport mechanism. Then you close it all back up. Again, the knob goes in the wrong direction, so to tighten it, you go counterclockwise. Now with a new roll film in, and this wound up, you advance it until you get to position one. And now you're ready to start taking pictures. It's a pretty neat little camera. It's a cute little thing. The Ditto 99. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.